Welcome to our channel my dear students. Today we are going to talk about the organic chemistry naming reactions part 2. So in which we are going to discuss these kind of reactions. Let us discuss one by one. Let's get into the topic. First one is the Markovnikov reaction or Markovnikov rule in which a part 2 we are going to discuss one by one. So here the part 2 that is the Markovnikov rule. What is Markovnikov rule? Actually this is the only applicable for unsymmetrical alkenes. Alkenes, what do you mean by alkene? Alkenes are nothing but it having double bonded carbon. The double bonded carbon containing compounds, hydrocarbon, so which is having the double bonded, that will be called as alkene. That unsymmetrical, which means that in, uh, in the double bond, Right side you can see, left side you can see. Left side two number of carbon atoms are there. Right side you have only one number of carbon atom. That's what is the unsymmetrical alkenes. When unsymmetrical alkene which is going to react with the halogen acid. Halogen acid at that time the negative entity that is a, this is a negative entity and this is a positive entity. This negative entity will go on approach where the lesser number of hydrogen which is present in between the double bonded carbon. In double bonded carbon where the lesser number of hydrogen is there that place will be occupied by the negative entity. That is what I will be getting these kind of product. Are you able to understand student? So this is a Markovnikov rule. That is whenever the unsymmetrical alkene reacts with halogen acid that will be the negative entity will go and approach where the lesser number of hydrogen which is present in between the double bonded carbon that is called Markovnikov rule and next we can see what is the anti-Markovnikov rule what is the anti-Markovnikov rule the same thing so it is entirely opposite to the previous one so what is an anti-Markovnikov rule it is nothing but suppose if you are having a Markovnikov rule if we know that Markovnikov rule what is the Markovnikov rule so it is nothing but uh, unsymmetrical alkene. Here also the same unsymmetrical alkene. So here only thing is the HBr which is going to form anti markonikov product. Why this is because of that? If you don't know about this concept, please go and watch my previous video in anti markonikov rule section. So you'll be getting good idea about this. So here uh, in presence of peroxide, this will be otherwise called as a peroxide effect which follows a free radical mechanism. Usually the peroxide which will be going to use as benzoyl peroxide. The benzoyl, in presence of benzoyl peroxide, the negative entity will go and approach where more number of hydrogen is present. Okay, in between the double bonded carbon. That is the anti markovnikov rule. That is exactly opposite to the Markovnikov rule. Okay, are you able to understand this? That is, that is what here, Le more number of hydrogen which is present, that Br- minus will go and approach here. So I will be getting a product. That is what the anti markovnikov rule says. And next one is a Woods reaction. What is Woods reaction? It's nothing but, so here, Alkyl halides, two alkyl halides will be taken as a reactant. So when two alkyl halide will be reacting in presence with the sodium in presence of a dry ether. So two alkyl halide and two molecules of sodium in presence of dry ether. So I will be getting alkyl that is a hydrocarbon as a product. Here the lower alkyl halides can be converted into higher hydrocarbon that is what the woods reaction will say and next one is fittick reaction what is a fittick reaction it is very very simple one what is fittick reaction so here it is nothing but so when fittick reaction will say what is that two aryl halides woods reaction is nothing but only two alkyl halides but in this case of fittick reaction Two aryl halides are involving in the same reaction that is with sodium in presence of dry ether. So I will be getting its product like this. Are able to understand student with the evolution of two molecules of sodium salt. Okay. Are able to understand this is called the Fittick reaction. Always which will be taken place with dry ether. Because why we use dry ether? Because the formed product will be insoluble in 
dry ether that is what based on that solubility also this also we can solve by using the solubility trick so here the sodium halide which will be uh, insoluble in dry ether that is what the uh, reverse reaction will not be takes place that is what the product will be stabilized here okay that is what the fittick reaction and next one is what so we as we discussed about the woods reaction and fittick reaction now we are going to talk about the woods fittick reaction this is what is interesting one so here one aryl halide one alkyl halide both are reacting with, with the sodium in presence of dry ether that time i will be getting the product like this if i am taking chlorobenzene and alkyl halide like methyl chloride so i will be getting toluene as a product with that sodium chloride as a evoluted product one are able to understand so here dry ether will be acting as a solvent the dry in the dry ether the formed sodium chloride is insoluble by using this trick we can able to find out the product very easily are able to understand students okay and next one is the very interesting reaction in almost uh, all the units this reaction will comes there is a friedel crafts alkylation or acylation reaction what is that friedel crafts alkylation or acylation reaction it is a kind of electrophilic substitution reaction let's see the alkylation reaction suppose if you are taking benzene as a pro reactant and that will be reacting with uh, uh, alkyl halide like uh, suppose if i'm taking methyl chloride in presence of anhydrous aluminum chloride initially that anhydrous aluminum chloride which is going to react to form a electrophile that electrophile will come and attack the benzene ring that's what i'll be getting to be as a product here okay are you able to understand and next one is acylation it may be otherwise called as acetylation acylation or acetylation because this group may be called as acylation acyl group or it will be otherwise called as acetyl group acylation or acetylation we can call it so here also the same thing the anhydrous aluminum chloride which is will be acting as a catalyst that catalyst will be able to react with the, one of the reactant to form its uh, respective uh, electrophile the electrophile then approach this uh, benzene ring that is what i will be getting a product like this okay are you able to understand student this is very very simple one if you do know about this concept please go and watch my previous video in electrophilic substitution reaction section so you will be getting good idea about this and next one is a douse process it is a very very simple one douse process so here the chlorobenzene to phenol we can synthesize the chlorobenzene uh, to phenol so i have to synthesize the phenol from chlorobenzene that time i have to use sodium hydroxide aqueous sodium hydroxide which will be reacting with uh, chlorobenzene at the temperature of 623 kelvin and 300 atmospheric pressure so with the elimination of nacl and h2o so i'll be getting a product like this say for example here the h and cl will goes off so here i'll be getting sodium phenoxide as a product if you acidify this i'll be getting a phenol as a product i think so you understand well so this is nothing but a douse process and next one is a very very interesting one that is a hans dicker reaction hans dicker reaction what is a hans dicker reaction usually the silver salt of fatty acids the silver salt of fatty acids which is going to react with bromine and we are going to reflux with the ccl4 i'll be getting a product like a alkyl bromide alkyl bromide i will along with that agbr as a precipitate with that carbon dioxide evolution so here this method is usually preferred to decrease the number of carbon atoms if you consider suppose if i am taking here ch3 this r may be ch3 if you consider r that is equal to ch3 if you consider what will happen that uh, ch3 coo ag with bromine you are going to reflux with the uh, ccl4 will be acting as a solvent and the uh, r br will be getting agbr in the instead of that r we will be getting ch3br 
Okay, are you able to understand? So here AgBr and C water is getting there. So here two number of carbon atom. If I start my reactant, I will be getting one number of carbon containing product. One of the carbon will be eliminated as carbon dioxide. Are you able to understand, student? This is very very important. Thank you so much for watching. Please go forward to others to get benefit, and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you for learning. Share and like this video.